and I began this uh, discussion over a year ago. We were kind of looking for the opportunity when things settled down with uh, the water, uh, with the water treatment situation, the distribution, and the always water treatment, and all the other things you've had going on. And talk now might not be a bad time to talk a little bit about the automation of your water meters. Um, there's two different methods you could use. One is a fixed base network, which is kind of high scale and probably something that you it kind of comes with its own IT issues. Um, your population may not it may not lean towards a fixed base network, but with a fixed base network, you would hit basically push a button and you would read all your water meters instantaneously. Um, you would get instantaneous information through a network on somebody who's tampering with a meter. If somebody's filling their pool and they've got a real unusual usage, if there's a leak on a on a customer's side. Uh, you would pick that up and you would get an alarm and instantly. You could make a phone call or dispatch somebody out. The information that you can get for customer service on these programs is very substantial. Um, we, uh, the other method is a drive-by system. You drive the route. It would take Greensburg probably two or three days to drive the route. You would pick up all the readings. One person in a, for the month, you would pick up all those readings. Um, other candidates and other communities, they're looking at other efficiencies that might be uh, energy efficient motors and pumps and, and variable frequency drives, um, SCADA systems, GIS mapping to help, um, methane recovery, high efficiency equipment, those kind of things are all kind of good candidates. It seems like you're in pretty good shape on your, your water supply um, and, your, and your wastewater treatment, but there are some other areas that might be candidates um, for this program. Where else have we done this? My local group has done about 200,000 uh, water meters. As a company, we've done about a million that we've automated through this program. Uh, the city of Anderson has 62,000 meters. We've automated all of those. It's a fixed space network. Um, uh, other communities here are uh, Bedford, Princeton, Mount Vernon, a little town of Patriot south of here, not very far away. Um, uh, Middletown, Ohio has 20,000 meters. We've automated all these meters uh, through this program. They are guaranteed to pay, the program is guaranteed to pay for itself uh, through the benefits, and we go through an assessment to find out exactly what that is. Do you have a, a approximate time as we say back for the city size of Greensburg? Well, it's not so much the size, it's the, uh, it's, it's, you build water off the sewer, which I understand that you do. Uh, your rate structure looks like it would encourage you to have a very accurate population. That's encouraging. We've kind of pre-qualified, so those all those all look good. The biggest uh, factor is water type, how hard it is, what's going on with your meters now, where's the accuracy of your meters right now, what's the average age of your population, do you have an aggressive uh, change out and repair program. Most people don't have the money to, to, to get in it, to change 10% of their population every year which is kind of what the standard is of and how it's encouraged. I would venture to say that, that anywhere from 10 to 4% uh, accuracy gain could be done by, by the, going through this process and uh, a brand new uh, population. We don't know that. We don't know that at this point. Uh, what we normally do is a free uh, assessment. We work with you to kind of start to nail things down, have better numbers, it take about 60 days we could come back at that time. Uh, Donna would work with me. It's not very, it, it doesn't consume your staff. Um, we do a preliminary engineering study, come back to you and say, this is kind of what we think it looks like. This is what we think the new water revenue looks like, the new sewer web revenue looks like, the savings look like, and this is kind of what we think it's going to cost. And then we can talk a little bit more at that time about the process. You have to advertise uh, an RFP to encourage other respondents. Um, there's a process that's all laid out by the, by the Department of Commerce. It's all audited by the State Board of Accounts. We turn in the report every year. Um, my company is the market leader in performance contracting. We have more than a billion dollars in these types of, of arrangements. Um, we're working on going to a meeting tonight with the city of Indianapolis. They're getting ready to execute a contract with us, the very same principle. And uh, I got a rate, uh, a lease late rate today for the city of Louisville. They're getting ready to kick off a, an energy conservation, a water conservation project that they will announce with us with, on Earth Day, which is about three, three weeks away. So there's a lot more. Uh, there's some case study. There's press releases. Um, I, I, I'll leave you with this is a turnkey program. We, we come in. We help you decide what the product is that you like, uh, the software, 
the uh, how they're going to interface, what you like in the field. Do you like frost place? Do you like multi-jet technology? Do you like positive displacement? This is your decision. This is a, a procurement vehicle that allows the client to determine what they want based on life cycle costing. This is not low bid, down and dirty on every aspect of the project. You go through an RFQ, you decide if you if you like a company like Johnson Controls and you want to work with us, or maybe somebody else, um, then you get to select your project and build your project as you see fit. And I'm not going to take up a bunch of your time. I know you have a lot on your agenda. Um, I'd be glad to answer questions. If you'd like to come back in uh, maybe June or July and uh, you give me thumbs up to work with Donna to kind of get you some better answers on what an automation program would look like for, for uh, Greensburg Utilities, that would be fine too. Sounds good, Chris. I mean, we, you know, uh, there's some need there. I, I went on, I think, the last tour. What they have to go through. I, first of all, I don't like the meter readers have to have keys to businesses downtown. Well, that's not a good situation. And then, like the pit on West Main Street, where they have to walk down into underneath the building to read a few meters, it's, the information is there. But there's a lot of good reasons why we need to start working on something somewhere in the near future. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a turnkey program. We'll have on site project management, we'll have on site IT, we'll have on site data entry people that aren't consuming your billing staff. We've done about 100 of these, so we've, we've kind of got a process that's, that works pretty well. Um, if you've got a, a local veteran, had a local excavator, they loved, they trusted, they knew where gas lines were, they said, if you're going to do this project, all the excavating is going to be done with this company, and that was okay. Under this procurement vehicle, you make the decisions on the product, the technology, the software, how it interfaces, all those things, uh, local content, um, all those things. Those are, those are your decisions. Can you make a guesstimate of how long it would take to do the city of Greensburg? Um, well, it would probably take about, once we get mobilized with our teams, it would probably take about four months. And then there's always, um, you know, a Hardee's that you can't, can't change until 3 a.m. and you got to do it on Easter Sunday weekend or something like that. There's always a, a school or two, so there's a few that linger a little bit longer on the change. Uh, but for the most part, about four months, we would have 99% of the project complete. Person Gardner one as well. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you guys, Steve, you were able to make them out of it, but you missed a pretty good tour. Both safety and legal liability. So, you know, if I was to start out, you get the safety factors first and the issues where we have keys to uh, businesses downtown, things of that nature would be the first ones I would do. We'd have to see quotes and everything from different companies and then we'd go from there. Not only based on cost, but quality as well. Any questions for them? Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Next item on the agenda would be uh, Leonard Shepard, Bread of Life. Um, I'm here, I work with the Bread of Life. And I don't know if you guys have been with the town of their current building or not. Uh, I started working with it about a year and a half ago. And the servers right now, around 200 meals, 220 meals on Mondays afternoons and Wednesday afternoons. And it's more or less out of like an old garage. It's uh, back behind, I guess, uh, the Sherman Williams building. There's a little section back there. Uh, there's no parking. There's no, I mean, people are walking out of that building right into the 